Kelly Spiggle here, bringing you my Girlfriend's Guru podcast, Talk, Travel, Transformation. If you peel back a butterfly's wings for them, they cannot fly on their own. I will be that person here next to you, guiding you through your caterpillar stage, to your cocoon stage, and finally to your butterfly stage, where you can be inspired and find your wings and fly. It has been my heart's deepest desire to curate my transformational experiences for all my wonderful girlfriends. Because when I find something I love, the thing I love even more is sharing it with another girlfriend. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in your day. I am just delighted that you're listening to the Girlfriends Guru Happiness Podcast because today I have an episode that you are not going to want to miss. I have one of my all-time favorite girlfriends, Dr. Carrie Ritchie. Thank you, Carrie, for being here. Thank you so much, Kelly. So Carrie is one of my favorite girlfriends because I get to see her when I go into acupuncture and I've, I'm always telling people about my acupuncture experience, but my heart lights up when I walk into the office and I see Carrie's smiling face. And the only thing that I hate about that this is a podcast, so you don't get to see her beautiful smile because Carrie lights up a room. So thank you for being here um, with me. And I have to talk uh, first before we go too far, I have to talk about her husband, Delenn Best, is one of the most distinguished and experienced oriental medicine practitioners in the United States. He is um, who I, he is my um, acupuncturist and he has treated everyone from, I think the grandmother down the street to me to pop stars. And I think I was once told that he's delivered something like over like 50,000 treatments and I don't know why that factoid is stuck in my head. (laughs) It's kind of random. But anyway, just a little shout out to one of my favorite places when I am at home in North Carolina, Best Acupuncture. And Dr. Carrie Ritchie here is the Chief Operations Officer. And, you know, we're going to talk about acupuncture because acupuncture is used for a variety of reasons, from everything from anxiety disorders, relieving pain, migraines, weight loss, stop smoking, any other addictive behaviors, fertility. And all that being said, the reason why I was drawn to acupuncture is just good old fashioned Eastern energy work. And that brings me back to my friendship with Carrie over here, because Carrie is a Chinese medicine practitioner from Australia, and she's very passionate about both Western and Eastern medicine. We're always having these great conversations, oh, don't we, before and after treatments, Absolutely. right? Always enjoy them. The, the one thing I've hated as, as I've been able to get back into the office after uh, COVID is we're really kind of in and out, so there's not a lot of lingering. So um, I'm glad that I talked you into uh, coming down to South Charlotte and getting in the podcast studio because we are going to talk about energy work, and I know one of your goals is like mine, to find ways to bridge East and West together to provide like ultimate health for you know all your patients and for me, my students, my listeners. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's wonderful. So let's get into it. So energy work. What does that even mean, Carrie? Like I'm saying energy work, Chinese medicine for everyday life. It sounds like a good like infomercial, right? Um, But I I mean, I say it's one of my favorite tools for transformation and happiness. But, um, you know, paint a picture, you know, what is even acupuncture? So acupuncture, I guess you can describe it as Acupuncture itself is the insertion of fine needles into certain spots in the body to elicit a particular response. And when we're, when we're talking about Chinese medicine as a whole, acupuncture being one, a modality of Chinese medicine, the whole body is made up of meridians. And along these meridians, there's, there's points. And all these points have a particular action. They elicit a specific response, um, re- re- whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's eating, bloating, whatever it is, certain points along these meridians are going to help to create balance and going to open up and shift energy so your body can come back into balance and actually be harmonized so that you eventually these problems will eventually disappear. So energy, it's really your body is able to sequester this energy by using the meridians and by using the points on the meridians to do this. 
Well, you use the word harmonize. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, my listeners know that I pick a word a year. um, And I've talked about that in different podcasts. And we've talked about what is your word for 2020. And my word for 2020 was (laughs) harmony, which are we kidding? But I think it actually is there's there's a lot to it. It's balancing those energy and and um, it has been a roller coaster, um, but as they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. Now, as we're getting to the close of the mm-hmm. year, I can actually see um, some harmonizing going on in my life. And certainly, um, I use um, use it for energy work because I want to paint a picture for everybody. Okay, so I first found Delenn after my mom passed away in two thousand thirteen, and I was digging my way out of a grief hole. And um, I had young kids, my mother had just passed, and I had built a life where I was busy, busy, busy. I was a human doing, not a human being. And um, I was this type A girl, and I remember going in, and, and one of the first things Delyn said was, you need to rest. You know, you had this big grief experience, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, I was spitting like a top. And um, he said, I'm going to introduce you, you're living out of order of the seasons. And he started talking about seasonal energy. And that's what I want to turn to first, Carrie, um, because um, I want you to explain the energy of the seasons. And if this is giving you a little bit heart palpitations, it did me the first time, girlfriends. And when he said, we're going into winter, and this was before Game of Thrones, winter is coming, I just said, hey, can I have a Hawaiian winter? Like, can I just have a little bit of winter? I was kind of very, trep- tre- uh, there was a lot of trepidation. So Carrie, like, explain sort of the energy of the seasons. What is it when I talk about seasonal energy? Sure, absolutely. So as we know, we have, you know, spring, summer, fall winter and um, earth energy or late summer the Indian summer and basically in Chinese medicine you know like Chinese medicine is not as I said before not just about acupuncture it's also about a season the seasonal you know what happens during a season and how that corresponds to the body and it corresponds say for example let's start with spring so spring is related to the liver And the liver in Chinese medicine moves and controls qi. And qi in Chinese medicine is our our energy. And so what happens in spring is, you know, they've come out of this slumber of winter. And you can imagine a seed. And it's underneath the ground. And then all of a sudden the days are getting longer. The days are getting warmer. Nights are getting shorter. And the seed has all this stored energy from the winter. And it's pushing its way up through the ground, up into you know, towards the light, towards the sun, so we can prosper, so we can lead then into summer. And then, of course, summer, and real quick, with spring, you have, um, I guess, uh, moods, and spring is determination. It can also be anger and irritability, and often this will be the result of, um, gee, your energy is not flowing through your body. And so when you go into summer, Summer is, um, it's fullness, it's openness. So the chi, everything is moving in a flowing manner. Your heart is open. The seasons are in full bloom. The sky is bright. The, you feel good. You, you're able to spend more time outside absorbing all that amazing vitamin D. You're able to eat really light, healthy foods. It makes, a, it, you know, it brings a lot of joy to your life. And then, of course, and then we go into what we call the late summer or the Indian summer, which is really a transitional period. And actually, that transitional season actually occurs at the end of one season and the beginning of the next. It's a transition, um, a late, uh, an Indian summer. And once we pass over that, we go into the fall energy. And the fall is all about letting go. And, you know, you can see as, you know, you're driving around, the leaves are beginning to shift. We've had this incredible um, life during the summer. The flowers have been in bloom. But now it's time to, you know, it's time to take a little bit of a rest. It's time to let go of what was and look forward to a really deep introspection of the fall and the winter. And so as we go into winter, we, we are given time to reflect. We're given time to actually look back and assess everything that's been going on. We're allowed, we're allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. And often, sometimes when people 
get stuck. It can, it, you know, it's in a particular season. If you're going, 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 you're always in summer, you're always doing, you're not giving yourself that time to hibernate. You're not giving yourself that time to be quiet and to be still, which is actually what you need to do. And it's okay if Absolutely. you're, did like, say you're thinking about your harvest mm -hmm. and you're disappointed in your harvest. Yep. That's actually a very important exercise to go through because then you go into winter saying, okay, what do I need to do differently? What, what, Absolutely. so it's like going through the seed catalogs. And actually that's the other reason, that. girlfriends, why I have <laughs> Carrie here. So, um, I am an avid gardener and so is Carrie. So she is one of these fellow green thumbs. Um, and we, we talk a lot of gardening together. Um, but I love winter. It's a great, I mean, like winter is an important experience, mm -hmm. um, for the garden, because Excellent. that's when you're pulling out those seed catalogs that you get, you design, I always write out like on the paper and, and I have all these plants and my husband always tells me, you know, you're planting too many plants. <laughs> like there's no way, you know, like you're overcrowding them. And, um, I actually, you know, I got very excited about my garden this year and Carrie and I talked about my garden. So I planted both, um, vegetable gardens and raised beds and a lot of food, um, during COVID. Um, and I had, you know, so many cucumbers and tomatoes and I just, I had an abundance and I was able to share with my neighbors and that felt great. And so thinking about the harvest of the energy of my, my garden, um, but my husband was like, we don't need to plant as many tomato plants. I mean, like we had tomato plants like coming out. I'd still have tomatoes. Um, and it's, it's, it's going into November and I still like it. There's, there's tomatoes everywhere. I love that. Um, but hold on, before we go into your winter, mm -hmm. cause we're in fall and this yes. podcast is during fall. So mm -hmm. I just feel like I have to highlight fall energy. I actually have to share the story. I went into the office the other day, like crying and Carrie's like, what is wrong? And I was like, okay, so you know how I say life is happening for you mm -hmm. and that all things are like they're happening in your life is for a reason or a lesson or to give you some wisdom. Well, I was a little COVID tired and honestly, I had planted a bunch of wildflower seeds. I had scattered them. And what happened, there were a lot of weeds because it wasn't just not, it wasn't necessarily methodically planned okay. out. And I asked, um, I have somebody, I do the flowers. I've planted every single flower bush shrub in my yard, but I do have somebody cut the grass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I asked the person that cuts the grass, um, and blows the leaves if he could just deadhead and pull out the weeds. Well, he's a grass cutter mm -hmm. and he literally, they, he cut all my plants to the nubs. So like hostas, like there's a season like hostas, they, the leaves turn, they die back, but that's an important because they need to die off so they can bring their energy into the roots, right. get stored for spring, right? Just like we do as human beings, our plants. I mean, that's the thing too, is if, if some of the conversation that we're having listeners goes over your head, just take a moment to go outside and connect to what's going on with the plants and the trees and the nature around you because acupuncture really, the experience of acupuncture eliminate, illuminates what shamans and healers have known since the beginning of time. If we can live in harmony with the natural cycles instead of fighting against them, we strengthen our ties to the entire creation cycle. Well, mm -hmm. um, literally by cutting my garden all the way down, I'm going to lose plants. Like that's, that's you, it's almost like cutting off an arm. Like, you know, it's the season to say, okay, what, what, what people do you want in your life? You know, sometimes cutting people out of your life can be really painful, Absolutely. you know, just like, just like these poor hostas, you know, he cut my lavender and I know I'm crying. Okay. Like this is, <laughs> this is, this is gardener struggles. Um, but so lavender is a woody plant. And it, you, you're not supposed to take it down just to the wood. You're only supposed to cut like the top three inches. It's all the way down to the nub. Yeah, the poor plant. I know. So I'm really glad that I harvest that lavender and use them for my girlfriend's guru bath bombs <laughs> before, because I don't know if the lavender's coming back. But that's the other thing is to be intentional and to realize too that the lesson that I got is if you want to do something, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. 
And that's the thing with the transformation journey. That's the thing with getting in touch with the seasons. Yeah, it's real easy to drink your cup of tea and look out at the things. But if you really go through the process of fall, and this is where we are, girlfriends, and um, I'm, I'll, I'll talk about some of the fall energy gratitude challenge I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till later in the podcast. But being in this moment and really taking inventory and taking stock of everything that has happened in this year mm -hmm. is crucial Absolutely. because winter is coming. Absolutely. So tell everybody about winter. So winter, winter is a time for quietness. It's a time for just being almost like a hibernation stage. You know, the foods shift um, energy wise, you know, you're craving um, more satisfying, more uh, warm cooked meals things that are really going to store energy and provide that sustenance. Um, going through the winter and obviously coming into spring, um, winter energy is related to the kidneys and the bladder. And kidneys are, um, in Chinese medicine, they store your life fire. And what's really important about winter is making sure that you actually do give yourself a break and you actually do nourish yourself in the proper way so that this jing, this, this life spark, that would, that actually does actually work throughout the entire body in Chinese medicine, is able to sustain you throughout winter and obviously for years beyond because you, that can, if you keep going and going, going and going and you don't have much left, you're pulling from that energy, you're pulling from that, that kidney gene and it's so crucial to make sure that you, you, know, you, you do the right thing by your body and you give yourself the break and you give you pers yourself permission to have the break and it's very, very important. So we're talking about spring, summer, transition, which mm -hmm. is the Indian summer, fall, and winter. And I'm going to layer that, if you almost take that in one column, then the five element cycle, which is the heart of Chinese medicine, is the element of earth energy, metal, water, wood, fire. So wood is spring, and that's birth and early growth. Fire is summer. It's the height of development. It's the peak performance earth is that indian summer time mm -hmm. um metal is fall decline receding let go and then water is winter death renewal and the cycle just continues and i want you to take the five the five elements or the the natural cycles that we're talking about and superimpose them almost on like you it can be even in a 24 hour cycle. So like you get up in the morning, you know, there's the waking up. That's like spring. Like you're like yawning and getting up and then getting dressed has more energy and then eating has more than going to work and it's more fiery and so forth. So within a day, you can have all the seasons Absolutely. within the season of a year, within a season of trying to build something. So like it might be truly fall, mm -hmm. but you decide that you're going to start a new online business. So you're actually, you probably been planning it. So you might be planting the seed. So you might be doing activities. So I just want everybody to think about, um, you know, for any project that you undertake, whether it's, you know, building a garden in your backyard, mm -hmm. you know, there's the planning and it follows the natural cycles very easily. But if you were going to start a new online business, you know, it might be in winter, but you're doing a bunch of spring energy and just be aware. It's not good, bad, right or wrong. You don't have to be so in the seasons, but you have to remember if you're planting and it's truly winter and you're not giving yourself breaks, that's mm -hmm. when you throw your body out of order. Absolutely. And that's what I was doing. I was basically, I was, I don't know. I think I was just always in spring, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always Aries doing, doing girl doing. and I'm fiery, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's like, you know, I, I, I was, I was always summer. It's fire, fire, fire for me. So, um, but now everybody knows I'm a yin yoga girl now. So actually that's a good segue. Gary, tell everybody yeah. about the yin and the yang of Chinese medicine. It's something besides a cool little tattoo, right? <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> So yin and yang is essentially, it's um, probably all seen it before, it's the black and white uh, symbol where the circle is divided into two, into two almost fishtails in a sense. One is white, one is black. And the idea is that one will always flow into the next and there'll always be this continual shift, this continual mo movement. And with, within that, within each yin or within each yang, 
there's going to be yin within your yin within the yang and yang within the yin. So no matter how many times you break it down, there's that pro there's that constant uh, balance and that shift where you know, say for example, 12 p.m. is the height of the height of the day. It's where the sun is at, you know, it's directly above. And then as soon as we pass 12 12 p.m., it starts shifting into the yin. So there's this constant movement of this cycle, this yin and yang cycle. And, you know, yin is, uh, yin is referred to as the dark, um, nighttime, um, inactivity, uh, the shady side of the mountain, whereas the yang is the doing, it's the sunny side of the mountain, it's uh, the sun, it's the daytime. And, you know, uh, going into the elements, there's yin elements, there's, there's yang, uh, yin elements and there's yang elements. And then, of course, within the elements, you can actually break those down further into their functions, into their layers and so forth. And so really what it is is just this balance, this, this continual balance of nature, of everything, everything in the universe. This, it's this balance. And, and yen, I love yen is feminine and yang mm -hmm. is uh, masculine. Yes. And you need both. It's just like you need the moon and the sun. Absolutely. You know, um, uh, I'm actually thinking a lot about these two energies right now because I am perimenopausal. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go, you know what, I'm going to put this out there. You know, menopause actually is connected to the imbalance of the yin and yang energy. So if anybody is, um, and listen up because, um, you know, my mother had passed, so I didn't have anybody to talk or to tell me sort of the stories. So um, maybe that this will land on somebody. So I'll be brief about it. But yin is the cooling system of the body and it is associated with female energy and the yang creates the heat and it's associated with the male energy. And as estrogen levels decline, this means that yin is also declining. And so the cooling system of your body begins to basically, I think, malfunction. Is that right? Yes. And so the heat symptoms, you know, like the hot flashes, the night, fla uh, uh, the night sweats, the dryness, and when uh, young is in balance, its levels can decline and that affects um, metabolism and the warming functions of the body. And this leads to the water retention, the cold hands, the feet, the weight gain, maybe indigestion and raised cholesterol levels. So mm -hmm. um, I am definitely using um, acupuncture to balance those energies in my body. And for me personally right now, I don't use any um, you know, other things except for acupuncture needles to get through this transition of my life. So stay tuned uh, for that <laughs> journey um, because I, I'm at the beginning of it. Um, but um, I do think that, um, you know, there is this, it's almost like a ballet. It's a graceful balance of the yin and yang within your life. And um, again, I picked that word harmony. Yeah. I like you know, and harmonizing, um, you know, definitely a doozy for this year. Um, but I do think that that harmony in nature as a standard for living, and that's one thing that COVID did is it really forced everybody to really get, I had a, I had a guest actually, um, uh, Sierra Hollister, um, who is very involved in Climate Awake, and it talks about, you know, Mother Nature, you know, coming back and sort of that rebalancing. Um, and um, we actually talked about that a little bit on the car ride down here. Um, we were talking about um, the wildflower fires and actually, I love bringing love into my podcast. <laughs> so this was not planned, but Carrie was one of the last weddings, I think in uh, February, she got married. Um, they got married in Australia. Tell, tell everybody the story that you told me, because I think it's great. So um, Dylan and I, we, were, we planned a February wedding in Melbourne. And shortly before the wedding, several months before we had uh, the bushfires started in Southeast Australia and in other parts of the country as well. And we were actually even debating whether or not we should postpone it because they were, they were absolutely horrific. And, um, but we decided we're like, no, we're going to stay the course. It's going to be fine. And we've got, we've got time to, to plan around it. Anyway, I landed in Australia and, uh, on the, uh, flight over, I remember the pilot saying, no, we're flying over the southeastern part of Australia. The cabin's going to fill, fill up with smoke because the fires, I mean, the smoke was just unbelievable. You could actually see it. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Fortunately though, uh, shortly after I arrived in, 
um, mid-January. Uh, mid the fires slowly were coming to, a, uh, coming to a stop. Three weeks later, Delin arrives. And it was literally, we got, we got married on the 29th of February, the leap year. Oh, yes. Very cool. <laughs> That's awesome. And I want to say the three weeks before, like literally February, it was that window between the bushfires and then the lockdowns. Yes, and I, I remember that was it was March seventeenth. Yeah. It was actually um, for me. We were on a trip and mm -hmm. we had to fly back into the United States, yep. and that was right around St. Patrick's Day. Yep. So, and, and y'all were on your honeymoon, and then y'all just stayed there for a while, right? Well, we we got back. Or were you able to get back? We were able to get back, and we um, the plane was empty coming back from Australia. We didn't do a honeymoon. We had the COVID honeymoon. <laughs> That's one long honeymoon, girlfriend. I don't. I don't know if that counts. I. I th I'm gonna. I'm gonna help you. Uh, we, we need. We need a vote for um, a, a 2021. Uh, again, this I is Girlfriends say. Guru Talk Travel Transformation Podcast. We can talk travel next year. We'll. We'll plan a good trip. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> looking forward to it. But yeah, it, it was absolutely. It was extraordinary, and I know, like, certainly for our friends who came from California. And certainly for a lot of my friends uh, in Melbourne, they've just come out of uh, lockdown. Um, it was really the last wedding that they had they had been to. It was the last time of celebration, in a sense, um, with a whole big group of people. So I feel incredibly blessed that it happened, and it was an incredible day. Wow. Love, yeah. love, just, I, I love wedding stories. They get That's you great. into your heart space, Aww. and... You know, it has been a tough year, but there is still so much to be grateful for. And, you know, when you tell the story, I'm thinking about all the fires that have happened in the United States. And, yes. you know, just a shout out, um, my podcast actually has um, a really growing viewership in Australia. So thank you, everybody down under um, and uh, for tuning in. And that's exciting. And I do have um, uh, quite a uh, significant group in California. So, you know two places far away from each other but you know we're going into this fall that knowing that we are more alike than we are different um i know there is a sense of division but you know i hope it's just like that yin and yang cycle that like it's at the end and now we can start to unify and um you know, that's kind of the state that we need to go into, mm -hmm. into Thanksgiving. You know, you're listening to this podcast as we enter the Thanksgiving season, and that's the season of gratitude. And um, on my 2020 vision board, actually, I had the phrase, I cut it out of a magazine, it said gratitude challenge. And honestly, I really hadn't tapped into that um, all of 2020, <laughs> but it's not over. And so um, if you're not a subscriber to the podcast, hit subscribe now and follow me on social media, Girlfriends Guru, and sign up for my newsletter online because I'm going to launch an interactive two-week gratitude challenge mm -hmm. because what we think about, we bring about. And this season, I really want to dial into supporting everyone to get into their heart space. And um, um, you know, again, I know that this may not land on some people's ears that they're not feeling the state of gratitude. I have the tools for transformation to get you there. Um, and it, I, I've always said, when you think about, you bring about, and there is um, an emotional your brain rewires. Like when you are saying things of what you're grateful for, instead of coming from a place of lack, I mean, it totally transforms your brain waves. Um, so that's the conversation that I'm excited about. That's absolutely, that's exactly right, Kel. Carrie, I just want to end this podcast just thanking you and everybody over at Best Acupuncture. Y'all have created such a beautiful space where I can have an experience and tap in. Um, to the energies of my soul and you guys are a big part of my spiritual growth and spiritual journey and I just want to thank you. Thank you so much Cal. So glad to provide the space and to see see you just flourish. Just see you grow and expand and create this incredible girlfriend's guru that you're creating. Thank Girl, you. Girlfriends, listen, it's a journey and I didn't get there overnight. I had girlfriends um, such as Carrie and this year, the season two episodes, they're going to be all about getting you into your heart space. I know that sometimes the transformational journey can be lonely. I went kicking and screaming into that Hawaiian winter 
I did not want to be still because I was afraid of being alone. And girlfriend, you are not alone. I am here for you to support you. We are creating online a conscientious and uh, community. Um, we're here to support you, give you tools for transformation. All the season two podcasts are going to be about getting you into that heart space so that way you can speak from your authentic, true self and and live in love and light. So um, with that, girlfriends, namaste, girlfriends. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much, Kel. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope today's episode has filled you with love and light. It is always my goal of every podcast to touch your heart and help you transform in some way. And if you are like me, when you find something you love, the thing you love even more is sharing it with another girlfriend. To follow and download this podcast, go to girlfriendsguru.com as well as iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Join the Girlfriends Guru game by subscribing to my website, girlfriendsguru.com. You'll automatically receive not only my latest podcast, but free yoga and meditation videos delivered right to your inbox. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, at Girlfriends Guru. The light in me sees and honors the light lit within you. Together, let's find our wings and fly. Namaste, girlfriends.